Hello Vintage Outboard Motor fans, this is T-Mike here again making a video on how to test and measure a flywheel on your vintage outboard motors. Uh, I made a video previously on the basic overview of the function of the flywheel on the magneto ignition system and now I'm going to take it a step further and kind of give you some science behind the flywheel and the magnet that's inside of the flywheel and then how to test it and measure it. I'm going to give you three ways to test and measure the magnet in the flywheel and we're going to go from the simplest basic way to measure it all the way up to the real scientific way to do it on the third one. So the third one's going to be the best. So stay tuned. Everybody's ready. Here we go. All right. So as I said in my earlier video, there was a magnet inside the flywheel that when it spins around the ignition system, around the coil, all right, it generates the current flow for the spark to happen at the spark plug. So now I'm going to show you a few slides to explain something called EMF, the electromagnetic field in a magnet that creates that spark. And once you kind of understand what EMF is, then I think we'll move into how to test it and measure it so you'll understand it. So here we go with a few slides. All right, so here's an illustration of a magnet and the EMF, electromagnetic field, that is created by a magnet that is energized. So every properly energized magnet has a north and a south pole, all right, which emits a magnetic force attracted to the opposite pole. So you can see the lines of magnetic force being attracted outside of the magnet between the poles. So this illustrates the field of magnetic force emitted by the magnet. The earth has the same uh, magnetic fields around it and magnets have an EMF illustrated by this photo. Okay, so moving on to the next illustration. Here is a magnet with the EMF, magnet, magnetic lines of force illustrated with a coil of wire surrounding that magnet that shows the current flowing around the coil. So this is the application that's used in our inductive magnetoignitic system. Taking the magnetic lines of force by the magnet and running them through the armature of the coil with windings around that armature that take that magnetic force and convert it into voltage with current flow to help provide the spark. So we've gone from the EMF, electromagnetic force of the magnet, to the wrappings of the coil around that force to create the voltage in our system. So the next illustration give you a better idea of what's happening. Picture that magnet on the left of this photo spinning around in the flywheel, running over the armature of our coil, which has windings around it, and the light bulb in the illustration would be the spark at the spark plug. So the important thing to remember about this illustration is that the magnet never actually touches the armature of the coil. The flywheel is spinning with a small gap between it and the armature and because the magnetic field is not inside the magnet, it's outside the magnet, the magnetic field does the magic on the armature and the winding. So now that you kind of understand how the electromagnetic field 
creates the current flow to our coil and the winding down to the spark plug. Let's move on to how to measure it. All right, so the next diagram will give us the uh, measurements and the specs of what we're looking for. All right, so this illustration gives us uh, the different measurements that you could take on an EMF and the units of measurements for each. So the first one is the field force, which is measured in Gilberts. Then the field flux is measured in Maxwell's. The field intensity is measured in Orsted's. The field density is measured in Gauss's. And the reluctance is measured in Gilberts per Maxwell and the permeability is measured in Gauss per Orsted. So the field that we're going to test is the field density. That's what we're interested in, the density of the lines of the EMF. And if you look at the feature of the field density, it's measured with in Gauss's and the units are Teslas. So the Tesla is how many lines per square inch that EMF emits. Remember the lines going around from North Pole to South Pole? Well, this measurement is the number of lines per square inch measured in Teslas with a Gauss meter. So in our final test number three, you're gonna see the Gauss meter and how to put a number on the measurement of the field density of the EMF. Now that we got through with all that science stuff, just kind of remember that we're measuring the magnet and we're measuring the, the EMF force that, the, that it's emitting. So we're not measuring the, touching the magnet and measuring the magnet at all. We're measuring that magnetic force outside of the magnet. So here's the first easy way to test a magnet, all right? And the way you test it is with a nut hanging on a string, believe it or not. Okay, simple, easy. Just take the take the nut, bring it down close to the to the magnet. And if the nut once the nut uh, is metal, gets into the magnetic the EMF, the magnetic force field, it will be attracted to it and it hits it. Alright, so that more or less tells you that the magnet is working. It doesn't tell you how good, the, how good the EMF is, doesn't tell you if it's good enough for spark or not, but it's definitely magnetized, all right? That's the first way. All right, the second way, and we'll take it another step further, is what I call the screwdriver test. So if you take a screwdriver, all right, and this is a small, small screwdriver, and you bring it close to that magnet, the magnet grabs it, and it holds it, right? So the magnetic field is strong enough to hold that weight, all right? So you can just keep testing it with a bigger screwdriver, all right? And see, it drops it off. How oh, it held it, so it's kind of on the verge. So I'll, that's just another it has no number to it to tell you what the number is of the EMF, but it's strong enough to hold the screwdriver, okay? So those are two simple, easy ways. You have a bolt, you have a screwdriver. You can check your, if neither one of those work on your flywheel, your, your magnet, all right, has been de-energized now. We'll talk about it in another video of how to re-energize the magnets and save them. Not on this video. Now we're gonna move into the third way and the best way to test the electromagnetic field. Third way and the best way to check your flywheel. And it's with a Gauss meter. That's right. They make a Gauss meter to check the electromagnetic field. It measures it, measures it in Teslas. They have a scale of 20 millitesslas to 200 to 2,000 millitesslas. 
So you take this test meter that you can get at, uh, oh, I got mine on eBay for 79 bucks, and you take the probe and you put it inside the magnetic field and press the button and it registers the Teslas to test your EMF on your flywheel. That's the best way. That gives you a number. You know exactly what you're testing. Okay? So, in conclusion, let's review the three ways to test and measure your uh, magnet on your flywheel are the string and bolt test, the screwdriver test, and the Gauss meter test. So with three, these three ways of testing the magnet on your flywheel, you ought to be able to solve any spark issue you would have caused by the flywheel. All right? Hope you all enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for the next video. Au revoir, mes amis. Hope you enjoyed the video here at T Mike's Vintage Outboards. We're doing it one motor at a time. Please click on subscribe by guarantee to provide weekly videos. Merci beaucoup and laissez les bon temps rouler.